you guys ever have something that you want to control the temperature in, like externally? Well, I've got a little product here that I think you guys are going to like. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have something that is coming out of the closet from long ago, and that is something from my history that I, I've got these bins full of beautiful trash. It's, it's things that I eventually I know I'm gonna use, and I store them because I'm that guy. Eventually I'm gonna need this item, I store it, and then today's that day, because if you can hear in the background, I have a fan running, and that's because I have an English Bulldog. And my English Bulldog, eh, well, as you guys should probably know, is they don't deal with heat very well. And although this is climate controlled, this garage, it still doesn't change the fact that she likes a cool breeze on her every once in a while, especially when the temperature gets above like 82 degrees. I know, <laughs> 82. So what I have here is a fantastic little device. And uh, yes, it is showing some problems because of the green screen, but this is a temperature controller, and it's an external temperature controller, and this little bad boy right here can do a lot of stuff. It's made by Ranco, and it's the ETC, the Electronic Temperature Control. So these guys right here are multi-purpose. This can either control a heating cycle, or control a cooling cycle, or it can control both. Now, this particular one I used for a 120-volt hot tub back in the day, um, I had a hot tub that uh, it burned out its, its controller board, and I said, why not just use this? So this guy has a little, little temperature probe that comes out the top. I dangle it into my uh, filter reservoir, and that gives me a live update on whatever the temperature is. And when temperature b falls below a certain degree, it kicks on. How easy, right? Now these guys also can cool things. And they're pretty common to use with chest freezers. And the reason people use them for chest freezers is because chest freezers make beautiful kegerators. So you take a chest freezer and you adjust the temperature so that it turns on and then it turns off right above freezing. So it is that crispy cold, that beer that we love to drink. And I myself used to brew lots of beer. I, I partook. Um, but not anymore, not so much. I still have my climate controller though, and it still probably works absolutely fine. I believe that this guy can switch either 30 amps or 50 amps. It's, it's like a lot, it's crazy. And that is, that is the scope of it. It cools or it heats, you set the temperature, you set the cycle, whether it's cooling or heating, and then you set the range, which is like how many degrees above and below you want it to stay. And then you just say go, and it goes. And then you can really easily hit the set button and you can adjust the up or down pretty, pretty quickly. It's a beautiful product. So what I'm gonna do is this is a climate controlled garage, but the other side of this partition, it doesn't get as cold, especially when I got the green screen up. So here's one of the ways that I can make life easier for the other people in my life. Yeah, she's a person. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to wire this guy. It, it's a fascinating product. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look inside, wire it up for a cooling cycle, and then we're gonna go ahead and see how it works. Why not, right? Let's do it. Okay, so I have a wire fair rule kit because I believe that the terminals in here could be done better with fair rules. Fair rules increase the ampacity or the amp carrying ability. And they preserve the ability for you to troubleshoot the item and whatnot. You'll see. We'll, we'll get right into it. But um, first off, the, it's very easy to service this guy. You can see I already have two cords coming and going. I'm going to probably keep those cords, but I'm going to open this guy up so that you can see what it looks like on the inside. This is an industrial product. I can use a power drill to loosen the fasteners. There we go. So the faceplate's got just a couple wires, and that's for your digital display and your push buttons, the membrane buttons. And then under this magical little flap, we have 
Well, I have a couple wire nuts. That's because I have running common, both the ground, and I have the neutral running common. So the only thing that is being switched is the hot. We could set it up differently if we chose. That's how I'm going to set it up, all right? So in this particular application, you can see that this device here actually has a little uh, internal power supply, and I strip off a little bit of the AC, the 120 volts, and you can see right here, common and 120 volt. So that's what these little tiny wires are. They run up here. That powers the device. This is my main relay, and it is rated at 277 volts AC at 20 amps. 20 amps. All right. Well, I thought it was bigger. Uh, I do believe I have another one that's 30 amps, but this one's 20. Plenty for a fan. A fan's going to pull, like, what, 3 amps, something like that. So um, here's where I want to maybe change things up. You can see I've got these guys just kind of coming together and coming into this terminal screw down. I would like to put those guys in fair rules. I just I have this feeling that it's going to just work a little bit better. Now this one is just fine. It works just fine, but I don't know. We always strive to do better, don't we? And that would be my fair rule kit right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my crimper out. That's this bad boy right here. And eventually I think it's going to be the orange. Hmm. You always try to use the smallest uh, fair rule that you can get away with. So let's try the blue. And the other terminal has got two different wires coming into it. And I believe that one I am going to need orange. But we'll see. I, again, I have not touched this thing in years. I mean, you're talking probably seven to ten years. And uh, it's I always knew that I was going to run into a situation where I'm going to have a, um, a freezer or something that would break. And, you know, some of those freezers, like the ultra lows and stuff, it would be detrimental if it broke and you couldn't uh, get it back up and running. All right, so it's not going to be blue. That's way too small. I lied. Okay, let's put that guy back. Let's put this guy back. All right, let's see. Orange, green. Okay, so these are um, by gauge, and, and the orange is going to be 12 gauge, which <laughs> that should definitely do it for me. So the way, the way these uh, ferrules work is you strip back the wire, and then this guy here will slide down the wire so that the insulation comes all the way up in the plastic cone. Then we take this fancy little crimper right here, stick it over the fair rule, and we give it a crush. And there we go. It gives me a beautiful crimped terminal. And that is a more industrial <laughs> look than, you know, just wire sp splintering and screwed down into a terminal block. Such a horrible way of doing it, but hey, it is what it is, right? So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys back. So this is the normally open, hmm. And let's see, it says over here, H1 is heat stage one, C1 is cool stage one. So when we set it up, we're gonna set it up to heat or to cool and as you've seen, we're going to set the wire into normally open. Come on. These 12 gauge wires are brutal when you're trying to get them to cooperate. There we go. You can see right there, the ferrule screwed down in the terminal block so much better. All right, now the next two, which are gonna be the common, so that would be your um, 120 volt in is your common. And for this particular one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two wires and one ferrule. I know some of you guys are going to be like, no, don't do it. No, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's, it's really not that big of a deal, guys. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to increase the size up one gauge to, what is this, uh, 10 gauge? Uh, what's green? Yeah, 10 gauge. Green here. 
And for these, I'm going to make sure that they're together, togetherness. There we go. Man, that's going to look so good. The best part is it's going to handle more current. Because if you don't have all the, all the conductors screwed in, it's not going to handle the full current. Okay, there we go. And we're going to go ahead and put this guy all the way in. Yes. Beauty. And now you have both conductors screwed into a terminal quite perfectly. You see that? That is a nice industrial connection. And now I'm just going to grab onto this doohickey with the pliers and get it to fit in the hole because now I'm fighting two wires. <laughs> there we go. Loosen up that terminal block. So my terminals are in. Um, my 10 gauge, the shank is longer than the other one, which is why it sticks out a little bit. It will be absolutely fine because this is a sealed box. Um, you can see that I have a zip tie. Oh, here we go. I have a zip tie here on the inside of these cables, and that is acting as my strain relief. Now, the only thing I don't have is a rotational strain relief because Twisting the wires can still break conductors. I haven't really figured it out or I, it hasn't really mattered because once you set this, you kind of forget it, you know, you just hang it up. So uh, I'm going to tuck the wires back in. Here we go. All right. Make sure none of the wires are sticking in on the seams. And... But we are not done. We are definitely not done. Okay, so we got the main body done. Uh, now, one of the things I want to do is I want to change out this guy right here. Okay, this guy, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like him for some reason. Uh, that I just don't trust it. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim this guy back. And I have a female uh medical grade plug here and i have a male medical grade plug so we're gonna strip back the insulation on this guy a little bit and you can see how i use my uh <laughs> my flush cutters i use them all the time for cutting insulation because it ensures that i don't damage the conductors on the inside there we go so here's my three. I'm going to use my flush cutters to get this guy. Okay. So I got this trimmed up. This is going to be my female. So first thing we're going to do, get the female plug ready. All right. Do it up now. This is an extra thick gauge, if you can't tell. It is every bit of 12 gauge. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to pull it up the cord a little bit. Now, remember when you're doing cords, it's always the best practice to leave your ground as the longest of the three conductors. Because of that, we're going to go ahead and trim back, let's say, a quarter of an inch on the hot and the neutral. And I'm going to strip those back. You can see um, I have a variety of different wire strippers and you're probably curious like why I resort to these old school ones. For some reason I have more control with these ones here. Like I, I can get all the way down to like 24, 26 gauge wire all the way up to, I mean you can, you can um, do some really thick like one aught gauge stripping them back with these just by snipping around the perimeter. These are easily some of my favorite wire cutters and that's why I resort to them. So. I know I've got all these latest and greatest like versions of wire cutters, but for like doing plugs, I just, I don't know. Whenever I deal with uh, electrical cable, I, I like going back to these. Okay, so I'm going to give them a little bit of a twist, keep all the inner conductors together. There we go. So that <clears throat> is the plug at the moment, all right? So my ground, uh, which is appearing black. The ground is the longer one. Trust me, it's green, guys. 
Um, all right, so let's check this guy, make sure everything is set and ready. So ground goes in the green. We have a brass colored and we have a nickel plated colored. So black to brass or it's your ass, green to green. It goes quite frankly like this. What I'm going to do is hold it like that while I tighten them down. Neutral. Ground. And then I have my stubby to which I will check the tension. Yeah. This is really the crush where you crush the copper conductors. There we go. Okay, and for the green, all we do is kind of bend it a little bit, like so. And the other two conductors are straight. Yeah. And we're ready. <laughs> that one is definitely green. Trust me, guys. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull this guy up. Okay. When it's fully seated on these uh, Hubble brand, there's a little notch. Once the notch has made it up, that's when we'll take the hand driver. Again, since these are plastic threads, these ones here are all done by hand. So that's my female. Actually, let's go ahead and do these ones with the drill. Notice how I'm going back and forth. It gives me retention right here. That's your, your yank guard. All right, and the supply, I don't know if I need it this long. I guess it's better to have longer than shorter, right? <laughs> it's, it is what it is. Okay, um, so here is my hospital grade. Oh, man. Ah. It's 20 amp. Okay. I'll be right back. Finally, after... <laughs> Sifting through what seems like an eternity of electrical surplus, I emerge victorious with a 15 amp. Let's do this. All right, so my cord is here. So one of the things that I always have a problem with is dirtier connections. All right, you kind of see those ones there. I usually don't even like to goof around with them. You can just cut them off. <laughs> Start again. Just like we did the other side. Get those fresh conductors. There we go. All right, and I'll show you guys that same technique I did earlier. Using my flush cutters to get right up and underneath the uh, outer insulation and just slide them down. Now you have to be careful because you will cut your hand. Uh, because if they slip, there's only one thing stopping them, and that is your hand. There we go. Excellent. So that is a pretty good strip. I don't know. Some of you guys are probably better experts at stripping than me. And this is a commercial grade power cord, which is why it's got a lot of this. I don't know if it's Kevlar or, or poly. What is it? I don't know. Nylon. Nylon cord. It's a, you know, it's a str strengthener, basically, but it makes it a pain and it's so dirty when you cut these cords. All right, there we go, close enough. Okay. Now, uh, same thing. We will cut the neutral and the hot back a little bit, leave the ground long. And before I do anything else, let's go ahead and thread it on this bad boy. I always make the mistake of threading it after I strip the conductor, so now they fray. Not this time, not this time, guys. There we go. That's good enough for government work. <laughs> Let's go ahead and thread it through. All right, excellent. Now, I understand this cord is dirty as hell. Um, that's life, right? <laughs> life of an electrical cord. So I don't need to hear the comments on that's dirty. I get it. It is. That one and 
ground. Okay. Little slight twist. Okay. This one here is a little bit different. This one is kind of an open frame, which is not as good. I do not like these, but it's what I had. Uh, open frame, just got to be a little more careful. The other ones that have the cavities, which you push the wire in, like this one right here. These ones are much, much better. Oh, well. So for this one, I'm going to use the stubby. First conductor we are going to sink is going to be the ground. And I already see a problem. I'll tell you what. Um, I know some people are probably going to disagree with me. Because this is an open cavity, uh, which means the wires could potentially arc across each other, I'm going to use fair rules. And I know some guys, somebody out there, some crusty old electrician is going to be like, no, never use fair rules in a plug. Well, I'll tell you what. I took apart an industrial plug uh, just yesterday. And when you know it, there's fair rules in the plug. So, the people that say don't do it, apparently some companies are doing it, so there's that. There we go. Nice. See, ferrules make everything beautiful, right? Nice professional connections. Nice. Much, much easier. I, I was thinking about actually like wrestling the individual fibers here on camera. Not today. You can see what I did. I put the ferrule in. Uh, actually, the green one right there is the only one that I'm seating. Um, it goes in nice and straight. Give it a little bit of a crimp. Now, here is the next problem. On this particular plug, the hot and the neutral are reversed. So I've got to reverse them here at the cord end, like so. Minor setback, but something to be aware of. They're not always perfectly lined up with your cord. It is what it is. There you go. Remember the wiring code? Black to brass or get your ass. That's right. Hot goes to brass which is black there you go all right next we are going to curve over that neutral put it in the pocket come on there we are man look at it. it's such a nice looking plug with those ferrules somebody's gonna, i already know somebody's gonna like rip me in the in the comments oh that's such a fire hazard no <laughs> i already know some of you guys are just jerks in the comments man <laughs> all right so now that I got them all in, let's check them for tension one more time. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Now let's get that inner sleeve. And then we are ready to test this guy and program it. Okay. So for this particular one, it lines up a very special way. All right, and then the final one is the strain relief. Bam, yes. Okay, this guy is ready to go. I will go ahead and plug it in. Woo, what a mess I made on my desktop. Let's go ahead and plug it in and let's see what catches fire. Hopefully nothing, right? Hopefully nothing. Okay. Uh, diff 1, S2. You heard it clickety-clack. That is because it needs some love. It is currently set for heating. It's only at 82. Um, let's see. If I remember correctly, we hold this bad boy down. Differential 2. Okay, C1, that's cool one. Uh, so we want it to cool, set. And temperature, 82. I want to set the, yeah, let's say anything above 82, we kick the fan on. 
Fahrenheit, switch one, 80 degrees, two, okay. We are technically ready. So right now, the female side right here should be energized. All right, all right, all right. Let's plug this guy in. Okay, our fan is on. And we have fan. So let's go ahead and let's set it. And notice it kicked off because I set the temperature to 86. So when it gets to 86, it will then kick the fan on because it wants to cool. Now, where it says C1 right here, that's cooling cycle one, I can actually change that to H, which means when it gets down to a certain temperature, it will close the relay from normally open and it will try to engage a heating element of some sort. Mind you, you have 20 amps worth of switching here, which means we could do a lot of stuff with this guy. Now you can use this to help cool your computer. You can use it to help cool a room. You can set it for a, a fan to kick on a fan if things get too hot for your pets, which is what I'm doing. Um, so it's very versatile. So let's go ahead, let's take it down. What do you think? Um, 82, set, differential two. Okay, it should be set and it, it should click to that guy right there. I don't remember the exact combination. Hmm. Differential two, and C1. Maybe I need to quit touching it. That way there it can end its programming and go into cycle. Hmm, you think I should set it for cooler? Yep, okay. <laughs> My differential wasn't set wide enough. So if I set it to 80 degrees, that means that anything that is um, not 80 degrees, it's going to kick it on until it gets down to 80 degrees, which we can do right here. Let's see, where is my thermostat? It's under all this mess. Okay, this guy right here, right above me is the air conditioner. Now watch, it's at 82. I'm gonna stick it right up here in the air conditioner. And you should see that guy drop off. There it goes. And notice how it clicks off. How cool is that, huh? So here we go, I'm gonna take it out. Now I've got temperature probe here in my hand. And I'm gonna treat it just like the room is warming back up. Seventy-eight, seventy-nine, eighty. Remember, there's a two-degree differential. Eighty-one. Got to get to eighty-two. There it goes. Two-degree differential. Now I can set it to one-degree differential, but this here, make sure that your device is not cycling on and off, on and off, on and off quite so much. It gives it a little bit of a resting period. And that's why I set it for a two degree differential. And you'll see the temperature will drop right back down. I've got the probe underneath this fan. There you go. So now I have a temperature controlled 15 amp, 120 volt outlet you can use for whatever you want, which means you could use it to control a refrigerator that's misbehaving. You could use it to control a water heater. You could use it to control a fan. You can do a lot of stuff with this, but I used it myself previously for a hot tub. Go figure. And it worked beautifully, by the way. So, guys, that is a temperature controller. This is Ranco. ETC, that's Electronic Temperature Control. You can find these guys all over the place. I think they're still on Amazon. But mind you, there's different types of probes. So get the one with the correct uh, temperature variance for the right type of probe. You'll be all set. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this video.